right two more to go and this is a again a huge part so um sorry i would suggest that you take a break <clears throat> before this so your mind is fresher don't try and lump everything together at one shot now um just now we covered what causes globalization we cover the impact of it so the third section is what strategies are they used to diversify it sorry what strategies are used to actually solve um, <coughs> or deal um, with the impact of globalization be it positive or negative correct so there are six I think economic strategies six more than that actually all right Diversify the economy is one. Second one would be to nurture SMEs. Next is to venture abroad. And of course, after that is to expand the market. Okay, stopping here. Four, just the big picture. Expand the market through economic cooperation. Diversify the economy. And you guys had venturing ab abroad. Okay. And developing small, medium enterprises. Keep that in your head first. And then first, later, we're going to talk about the people, but first, these four, okay? So this four is about the economy. Let's talk about diversifying the economy. <laughs> so essentially, you know, Singapore is very small, we're very scarce, uh, very scarce resources. And of course, the focus is on Singapore. So um, we aim to be technological, technology intensive, high value add, because you know how it's like low value add, you create a lot of goods, but they sell for very little money. Um, we, and this, you have to memorize. We intend to be involved in electronics, chemical engineering, um, pharmaceutical, and life sciences. I told you that before, especially my generation. Um, before that, it was focused a lot on engineering, um, a lot of engineering courses. And then, of course, later on, life sciences, a lot of scholarships overseas, um, attracting foreign life science companies to actually set up base in Singapore. So, for example, your A star for technology, okay, your C gates, your biopolis. Um, infrastructure, all this attracts companies to set up operations in Singapore as a base. Um, so all this would be actually your manufacturing and bioscience industry. This is manufacturing and bioscience. Now, of course, we moved on to education as well. You see a lot of universities being set up. You have to memorize a few. Pennsylvania Walton School of Business. Or I think the easier one for you guys might be Chicago Graduate School. Okay. With these renowned institutions, um, of course, you're hoping that our local research and education will improve. But of course, as well, we also attract foreign students to actually come over and study in Singapore. Third is, of course, tourism. So very easy is your integrated resorts in Marina Bay Sands and Sentosa. So as a choice tourist destination, no construction and retail industry. Um, in fact, I think now we are also looking towards finance but i think this is more than another example so one is manufacturing technology engineering um engineer pharmaceuticals life sciences two is education chicago graduate school button school of business three is tourism integrated resorts marina bay sands and tosa okay all this the point is to reduce dependency on one market with a range of goods who are less vulnerable in even when there's economic turn down, we are more stable. If there's a turn down in life sciences, we can rely on tourism. If there's a turn down in tourism, we can rely on education, uh, which is technically more stable. Anyway, because usually um, education is not so affected by economic downturn. So, <coughs> in short form, uh, one, you're talking about technology intensive, higher value added, um, technology intensive, higher value add industries. Two, Institutions, ASTAR, TNC, Seagate, 3, Education, okay, 4, Tourism, IR. Of course, you know about our IR, right? It generated a lot, a lot of income in the construction industry. Okay, they were literally um, dripping with fat during that time when they were building IRs and um, all the hotels and everything. But of course, um, <coughs> Even the people who went into work in the IRS as well. Okay, uh, let's move on. So, implication. Reduce dependency. Therefore, it's stable in any economic downturn. And the key we're looking at is it ensures that development is sustainable. Not just, you know, um, it can continue on. Not just one economic downturn and all and everything crashes. Now, if you want to argue why this is important. So, this is going to be a street star. Because this is what the, your notes, the front part, the long, long one that says um, it's important for impact, okay? This part is 
important if you're arguing why is it so important to diversify? Why is it necessary to diversify? So for questions like why is it so important, why is it so necessary, you would argue with a very small open economy, small population, we lack natural resources. Therefore, we need to move outwards um, globally. We need to ensure that we are diversified because any decrease in demand for any sector can affect our economy. So if we diversify the ideas that it will be easier for us. Okay, so this is, remember again, only if the question asks us, you know, especially or why is it so necessary, why is it important, then you're able to argue that. Um, <coughs> second point, okay, it says three by such second point, nurture SME, small, medium enterprises. Now, that's because Singapore, if we in, if you introduce all the TNCs to come in, you've learned also that local businesses close down. So you don't want that case where the TNCs come in and they are in charge of your economy. You want to make sure that it's a inter-reliant, inter-dependent kind of thing. Like they, TNCs come in and rely on the Singapore SMEs to help them. And that way, it's not so easy to just move out of Singapore. And also, that means that your local businesses don't go out of business and your economy is not just in the hands of the foreign country. So SMEs, first of all, play a large percentage of businesses, but they are very unable to compete, especially because our market is so small. So to instead of saying local SMEs versus TNCs, why not SMEs help TNCs? So, and the way of doing that essentially is, of course, first of all, um, provide assistance, okay, to enhance capacity, and second of all, to grant tax and exemption. So the implication is that SMEs should support the operations of TNCs to provide them with components, so we become a regional manufacturing hub and it's important because they also generate employment for the country okay and as i said you don't want your entire economy to be in the hands of the tncs you want to develop something that's more interdependent so i'm adding a lot of extra stuff if you can add it in as well okay um <coughs> now nurturing growth of smes large percentage of businesses and jobs unable to compete with big markets so the three things you must memorize four things in fact bank loan scheme, association of SMEs provide assistance and training, and tax exemption of first 100,000 for three years. So implication is that they support TNCs, they supply components, it enhances Singapore as a regional manufacturing hub, generate employment. Can you please add on as well? So it makes T, so I put plus, huh? sorry, the mouse is very hard to write. So plus, it ensures that the TNCs and C's, okay, by yourself, are also reliant. Okay, the TNCs are also reliant on the SMEs, okay, um, which gives them a place in the economy such that there is no, um, the economy is not totally dominated by the TNCs. I repeat again, SMEs um, support the TNCs. So this makes sure that um, your entire economy is not purely dominated by the TNCs. SMEs still have a role to play um, in society itself. Okay. Alright, next one. Venturing abroad. So, <coughs> because we are small. Again, what's so important about this? Because we are small. Very limited resources. We have to venture abroad. So, neighboring countries that have abundant memorizes things. Land, labor, markets. Okay. So, the Suzhou industrial market and then the National Tech Park in um, Bangalore, India, we actually do um, pull in a lot of money. I remember Suzhou was a very happening thing in my time. Um, also, Africa, Latin America, Central and Eastern Europe, um, both Economic Development Board, International Enterprise Singapore. So you see, the government has actually put in the effort to set up these companies to encourage firms to venture abroad, um, and there's also tax incentive to sell the factories abroad. So the idea is that this sustain us because first of all, more importantly, the word is new market. And of course, it's about diversifying, spreading your investments all over the world. So I repeat again, that's about two things. One is about um, new markets. And second of all, it's about diversifying as well. <coughs> all right, so you memorize everything up to here. Okay, everything above this is your how. One, regionalization, markets out overseas have lower costs in new markets than new land. Two example, Suzhou Industrial Park, International Tech Park in Bangalore, Africa, Latin America, Central and Eastern Europe. Three, Economic Development Board and International Enterprise offer incentives, tax rebates. So I repeat again, four things, regional, regionalization because they have lower cost labor and markets. Suzhou Industrial Park, International Tech Park, 
Africa, Latin America, Central and Eastern Europe. Four, Economic Development Board, International Enterprise Singapore offer incentives, tax rebates. So cost and effect, there are new markets which means that we are no longer physically limited. Okay? And this secures our growth even if markets and opportunities are weakened. Essentially, it means that it diversifies our diverse. The keyword, uh, I put D and S. Uh, keyword is to diversify our economy and ensure that our development is sustainable even when there's a downturn or opportunities are reduced. Okay, so please add on this stuff. I, re I repeat again. Uh, we're talking about um, diversifying the economy and of course sustaining our economic growth. Um, because we spread our investments overseas and our markets overseas. Now, again, this is the star part. I ask you why is it so important or why is it necessary? You argue that especially because economic downturn, such as 1997 Southeast Asian financial crisis. Um, we've gone through two big events. Uh, one is the slowdown in the electronics industry. That's why we moved towards um, tourism and bio life sciences. And two is because of the financial crisis which affected us. When Thailand went through the financial crisis, um, even though Singapore didn't really, wasn't really part of it, but because they we we do trade a lot with Thailand, we were also severely affected as well. So it helps develop. Ah, uh, more importantly, remember the widening income gap. This helps to close the income gap, and this ties up with your ASEAN as well. How Singapore IAI, okay, in the sense that we need to help develop our neighboring countries because we affect each other. Yeah, and of course relationships as well. So again, cause and effect. One is economic. That means we need to diversify. We're so small and um, to sustain our um, growth in terms of bad times is one economic. Two, we're talking about the fact that um, <clears throat> we're so interconnected um, with each other that we have to make sure that we develop other countries around us as well because their recession can affect us or even bad relationship can also affect us. Now, four, expand markets through economic cooperation. Okay, so the idea is to sign free trade agreements. So you see, ASEAN is actually here as well. So this is actually a repeat of your ASEAN paper. How does Singapore help you know ASEAN economically? We sign free trade agreements with individual countries. So um, basically, there's less taxes, there's more choice in goods, that's easier to actually invest overseas. Okay, and there's another second point is your special economic zone such as the Real Islands. So it's tax and business incentives. So this brings about sustained economic development because we have strong economic competition. So instead of me versus you, why not develop together? Okay. So again, this is your um, importance. Why is it so necessary? Because of sustained economic development. Sorry, why is it so important? It's because of competition. What am I talking about? Okay, it's because of competition. All right. So memorize this. Free trade agreements, Singapore, FTA, New Zealand, Japan, Australia, United States, India. Don't need so many trees enough. Uh, more choices in goods and services. Easier for local companies. Special economic zones, real islands. So free trade agreements and special economic zones are important. Tax and business incentives to trade in these areas. Now, cause and effect. When there's cooperation, it's easier to do business. Especially because there's fierce competition. Therefore, you need it to sustain growth. Okay, quite simple actually. Right. <coughs> Let up. That was all about our economy, diversifying it, venturing abroad, expanding it, cooperating with other countries. Now, this part of strategies is about people. So you see here, it's about people. So there are a few examples. Please memorize and write it down first. So you have the big idea. One is local entrepreneurship and technopreneurship. Okay. Um, two is your continuous learning. Three is your foreign talent. So it's very simple. Three main points, okay. Um, one is encouraging entrepreneur and technopreneurship. Two is um, your look, uh, foreign talent. Three is continuous learning. So again here, local entrepreneurship and technopreneur difference. Entrepreneur is thinking of a new way of doing something, a new way of setting up business. Techno is using um, technology to actually do that. So for instance, <clears throat> you want more people to take risk. Okay. Um, and it's a good place to actually do it because of the good foundation education. So basically, technopreneurship is to use technology from home to low operational costs. Um, NUS and NTU are actually teaching all them, young Singaporeans, how to do this. And laws have been modified 
so that when they become bankrupt they can set up business again and <coughs> they actually give recognition so actually to be honest it's still very not much of your generation in my generation global, uh, globalization was a huge topic I remember for a general paper in JC we all had to study write essays on it you know and it was very disgusting um, but I do remember studying about and of course even in economics in JC you also learn about um, entrepreneurship and I remember there was this very famous one dollar two dollar shop it still exists in a different way today but in the past I think it was called the two dollar shop and it was such a new concept then and there were 10 20 branches over Singapore and we were so excited because it was like going Japan you know the Thai sold the idea that you can go and buy something for two dollars and everything and um we would buy we would buy a lot of nonsense there I remember teachers day you know um, I had this friend who um went then just bought two dollar flowers for every teacher and we were thinking it was so much more affordable and the point is that I remember the lady who ran it actually um the business crashed it no longer exists the original shop you, you see a lot of other spin-offs but it didn't exist um and of course bubble tea as well um they used to be everywhere and of course it it we uh, all closed down and then suddenly now it's back again so i think the idea is that someone has to go there first and open up the market i mean uh but of course the problem was that we these entrepreneurs make the mistake of oversaturating. It means opening too many branches at one shop. Maybe it could have gone slower. Because if you see bubble tea is still an ongoing trend, you see the fact that um, the $2, $1 shops are still around. But because you need the people to go out there and make these mistakes before people can develop these um, businesses into viable uh, um, businesses, you have to go out there and try before and make some mistakes. But the point is not to make it's not to punish those who got there and tried. And remember that um, she appeared on the newspaper even though she was bankrupt and everything and um, the government still awarded her, um, still mentioned her, you know, affirmed her because they recognised that we need entrepreneurship and technopreneurship to open up our markets and even though some may fail, there's some risk taking involved, um, it shouldn't be punishable because these industries are still sustainable. Bubble tea still exists. Um, but of course, I'm looking at a very small aspect of it, huh? Even life sciences start out with Big Bang. I mean, and of course, it, a lot of researchers came from all our countries. A lot of money was pumped in. And now it's been reduced. But not to say there's nothing good there. There's still good stuff going on there. But maybe at the start, it was a bit oversaturated. Okay, the, our life science industry. So the idea is to have entrepreneurs and technopreneurs. But to not punish them. even And to encourage people to take risks. So causes by NTU and NUS. And laws modified. You have to memorize these things. Okay. So um, encourage people to use high-end technology and eventually develop them the profitable business ventures which will contribute to Singapore's growth and even better if it spreads over to other countries, our local brands. So again, idea is local entrepreneur and techno technopreneurship. So for examples is um and define it, take risks, new products. Okay. Um one, we are well educated, we have good foundation, we are suitable for technopreneurship. Two, they can run from home is cheaper. Three courses conducted in NTU and NUS by professionals. For laws modified to allow failed entrepreneurs to actually still continue to do business. So the idea is cause and effect. It is a conducive environment. They use high technology. There's more profitable ventures. Obviously, this will help um, improve Singapore's economic growth. Now next, second one, in the sense for human development, is to promote continuous learning. Okay, I have no idea what a KBE is. Okay, um... Yeah, I really have no idea what KB is. Okay, um, sustain Singapore's growth. Okay, you, you have to promote continuous uh, learning, um, especially because of our limited manpower and aging population. And of course, the fact that our industry is changing so fast. You know, we went from engineer to life sciences to tourism. Um, we need a lot of new skills and sometimes our education cannot keep up with um, the development of these skills. So, but the idea is that at the end of the day, you should be willing to swap industries. And I quote, um, teachers as example sometimes. My friends and I, our generation, we swap careers very easily. So my friend was in finance, she was in tax, and then she jumped into um, now um, finance, finance. Um, so it's a huge jump because they do a very different things. One was basically tax accounts and the other one was actually about um, finance trends, you know, where to earn money from the financial markets. And I guess that Singaporeans need to be more um, adaptable, you know, and learn new things and incorporate new things um, you know even teachers as well I remember a colleague told me that um, she's 
um, at least 50 plus years old and she's struggling with the internet because it's a new skill that came up and she said that she missed the one training and then after that she just found it so hard to catch up and even for me when I try to teach my parents how to use internet you know it frustrates me to no end because um, it's a skill and it's hard for them to actually considering, considering they're not born in this era of technology to actually use um, all this technology so the idea is that we need to have people who are creative and innovative such that even though they are new um, developments, new ideas, they are able to come up with them and also able to go upgrading and retraining. So even teachers, you know we go out for courses as well, okay? All the new pedagogies, uh, ways of teaching. So the example is Singapore Workforce Development Agency, um, Employability Skills System, Information Technology, Skills Development Fund, a lot of things to memorize. Let's stop for a while, let's go back again. Memorize, Singapore Workforce Development, <coughs> So we purposely create an agency and we push for employability skill system okay, to train them in things like IT and um, other skills. And then the skills development fund is the money to actually encourage employers to train their workers. So I repeat again, one, the workforce development agency is the agency that comes up with the employability skill system to train them with the right skills and also the skills development funds to get employers to send their workers to upgrade their skills. So with new skills, they're able to ensure that relevance, keyword is relevance, because our changing economy, okay, and can compete with other world-class cities. Since you don't have the manpower, you assume that your manpower is able to develop and change, especially because we also have an aging population. So, <coughs> one, innovative, two, workforce, okay, in this workforce, three, employability skills such as ICT, four, skills development fund, okay, now, cost and impact. Again, pause and write out on your own so you can remember, okay? With better skills, they become more relevant. Why? Because our economy keeps changing. Also, now, I'm throwing this as well. Why is this especially important? The attitude of our workers, okay? We are seen as sometimes less flexible and adaptable. Um, so, the point is that with our aging population, this means that Singapore will suffer from a shortage of workers and um, you have to promote continuous learning so that Singaporeans are able to better deal with retrenchment with our industries moving from focus to focus. So one day if your industry isn't the focus anymore, let's say um, IR dies out and we move towards uh, something else, maybe some other science technology and that means that um, the industry will shrink, you know, just like bubble tea, you will shrink. And ideas that uh, are you able to get these people who are no longer in the industry to accept retraining so that they can um, get the jobs. Because the jobs are actually all around, the jobs are there. But the problem is that, are your people trained to meet up with the requirements, you know? So even if you move to new industries, we need training. So instead of hiring, um, let's say overseas, if your own local people can actually adapt, then of course you provide jobs, it solves the social problem of unemployment. And of course, um, the social tension from having been retrenched, it's a very disturbing prospect if you have a family, okay? Um, and things like that so and we need to adjust the attitude of our people towards continuous learning so you see in in schools you see that some of the motos are continuous learning you know um, the values are there in the teaching industry we also go for a lot of courses to promote this idea that you have to keep keep up okay last one attract and retain foreign talent same thing aging and shrinking population okay so foreign talent such as entrepreneurs industrials lists um, bankers scientists okay um, we do that by having information centers so people can learn how to work more in Singapore, you know, um, public campaigns. Um, you see welfare, Singapore setting up booths to attract people to come over to visit us and even to study in Singapore, to work in Singapore. So there are a lot of information booths to let people know how it's done. Um, and I just that we can attract the necessary manpower and plus overseas business contacts. So you remember the part where we educate the Vietnamese, is it Laos? Laos? Scholars? Okay, in Singapore, we offer scholarships, our ASEAN scholars and even our Chinese scholars. The idea is that um, there are two ways to help Singapore. One is economically, one is politically. Obviously, politically, um, we have cultural exchange, it's easier to uh, um, communicate with others, okay. But sometimes it's more about economy as well because um, that means you, we actually expand our overseas contacts. If they study in Singapore um, and they go back, you know, we know how to invest in just countries, we know how the culture works. Um, I've seen a story where Singaporeans used to go to China and invest when China was opening up industries, the Suzhou Industrial Park, Dalian, everything, and 
a lot of complaints they had about Singaporeans was Singaporeans don't know how to interact with Chinese. You know, the Chinese would go drinking, they go karaoke, and that's their way of doing business. And they don't like things in black and white. A lot of it's what we call guanxi, you know, connections. Um, whereas Singaporeans are, you know, black and white, sign this, you know, trade this, trade that. But that's not how Chinese work. So the idea of bringing in foreign talent, foreign students, and is that we build up context and we learn about their culture so we know how to work together with them. Of course, we're talking about cultural diversity as well. We are a cosmopolitan city and you want to be able to um, promote that, you know, and attract people to come over in today's world. So again, the three examples I'm going to underline here, okay, um, to attract entrepreneurs, industrialists, bankers, scientists, okay, um, information centers in key cities like London, New York, Los Angeles, um, living and studying conditions. Um, of course, even expatriates uh, who come here are also given um, housing relief you know, by the companies that employ them. Singapore schools and universities also bring in foreign students. Okay, Of course, I just also raise the competition level. Um, sometimes in, in sports okay, um, or in academics, um, the ways that they're being taught, um, it does bring some friendly competition. So cause and effect, we have the manpower and the business context to develop you know, these jobs. So even though they come and work for a while and they go back to their own home country, we can still do business, you know, we can set ties, especially the companies related. And of course, cultural diversity to enhance Singapore as a global city, cosmopolitan. I'm going to put a star here. Why is it so important? Especially because we have an aging population and lack of manpower. Okay, so this is done up to here. Um, we are left with environment, but if I ask you what is the most important method to actually strategy for Singapore's economy, um, cause and effect. Okay, you realize that maybe diversifying the economy um, has um, other called effects, you know, um, such as generating um, retraining because we are spreading to other industries. So there's retraining and continuous learning. SMEs need to be set up to help support this diversification, probably. Um, what was our last factor? Okay, you go fit it in. But I suspect it might be easier to argue that. Think of cause and effect. Um, greater smaller impact also as well. That it's hard. Um, I mean, there are a lot of ways of arguing this. You can say it's harder to attract foreign talent because there's a local back, black backlash. On the other hand, you could also say it's harder to train Singaporeans. It might be easier to actually attract foreign talent. It's faster, it's immediate. Retraining takes time. Okay, so maybe foreign talent has a bigger impact. So you have to play around with these things for your cost and effect. So if you could just spend 2-3 minutes, you know, um, think about it. And then it will train your, your mind up for your conclusion skills. Okay, one last one for environmental strategies. 